Well, ultimately, we're dealing with the hormone that has driven the human species to where we are today. It's like probably the most important hormone chemical out there because it gives men our ability to seek out new challenges. And one of the main things is just clarity of thought. Uh, our, our, our thoughts and our brains require testosterone in order for us to think clearly. If you notice that you have foggy kind of distorted thinking patterns and especially if you've been divorced you know the stress of that that drives up cortisol levels today we are talking about getting in shape and boosting testosterone particularly after divorce and a lot of the men i talk to are worried about their life going forward after divorce right am i attractive enough am i too old is anybody going to want me am i ever going to have sex again and then the quick follow-up, like, am I ever going to have sex again with somebody who actually like, likes me and wants me, right? Uh, so I'm super excited to have Dave with me today. Dave Morrow is the founder and head coach of Hard to Kill, which is a warrior physical fitness training, and he knows a lot about this topic. So Dave, would you just tell uh, my audience who, who might not know you as well a little bit about why you know so much about this? Sure thing, Rachel. Thanks for having me on. And uh, through the power of the internet and uh, Jerry putting us in uh, in touch, uh, I'm here now on your podcast, so it's a real honor to be here. So thanks for having me. Uh, Dave Morrow, and I am a veteran of the Canadian Armed Forces. And by virtue of, I guess, being injured while uh, serving in Afghanistan and just going through, I guess, the the pain and the frustration of being injured and being released from the military due to the injuries and then starting a family and becoming a suburban dad and getting into a career that I didn't really like and kind of going into a downward spiral. I created my own company, uh, Dave Morrow PT, because I guess I could say I figured out how to more or less get out of the hole. And a lot of it centered around physical fitness and nutrition. And like you mentioned, talking about testosterone, that was something that I wasn't really tracking. And now I've realized that the overwhelming majority of issues that arise with not only myself, but with the men that I work with, the, the veteran men that I work with are centered around hormonal issues. And obviously testosterone being our, a major driving sex hormone for men, getting that sorted is of the top priority when, when dealing with sorting out your health. Yeah, you know, Dave, a lot of my clients have been married for a long time, right? And one of the patterns I see for a lot of them is that they use exercise initially as a way of coping with some of the emotional pain and distress um, and getting through the divorce. But then there's another piece of it where it's like, okay, I've got to go you know, back out into the dating world, right? And so they want to be in good shape. But then this, there, there's just so many factors, right? They've been married for so long, it's really daunting. And a lot of them are worried about how old they are, how attractive they are, is anyone gonna like them? Tell me a little bit about how testosterone plays in to all of that. What, what role do you see it playing with your clients? Mm -hmm. Well, ultimately we're dealing with the hormone that has driven the human species to where we are today. It's like probably the most important hormone chemical out there because it gives men our ability to seek out new challenges, to have clarity of thought, to remove inflammation, to build muscle. It's got a bad rap in the last maybe 50 years or so where it's almost like a derogatory term, like, hey, calm your testosterone because it's been associated with overtly aggressive behavior, but negative aggression that comes from being an asshole, you know, trying to get into a fight, unnecessarily being, you know, pushy with somebody. Sure, I guess that could be addressed, uh, associated with testosterone, but ultimately what it does is it, it gives you the drive to get up and go. And when you can, like, when you can ensure that that hormone is tracking in the right direction, things start to become a little bit easier. And one of the main things is just clarity of thought. Uh, our, our, our thoughts and our brains require testosterone in order for us to think clearly. If you notice that you have foggy kind of distorted thinking patterns, and especially if you've been divorced, you know, the stress of that, that drives up cortisol levels. Well, the problem with cortisol is that it's inhibitory to 
testosterone. So if you're experiencing a high stress environment, let's say you have a high stress job at work, now you're going through also one of the most stressful things a man can go through, which is the divorce. You're now in a low testosterone environment. And in order to combat that, you have to apply some strategies. Now, in my world, obviously, uh, the men in the, the veteran space, there's a lot of divorce in the, the veteran first responder world, so that we're not immune to that by any means. Add on top of that, we had a very stressful job in the military if we were deployed or if you're a police officer, you currently still have a stressful job. And then there's a whole bunch of other compounding factors that add in a lot of stress to the system. So your body now has become a wash in cortisol. And cortisol is a corticosteroid hormone. It's good for you, but in chronic quantities. So you're constantly stimulating your uh, stress response through external stimuli and internal stimuli. You're going to end up underutilizing testosterone essentially. So how do you return to that steady state and optimize your testosterone is partly what I do. That's really fascinating to me to hear, Dave, that link between stress and testosterone, because my, I don't know anything about testosterone cycles. My thought was that there's changes as you age with testosterone, but it sounds like, they that, do. okay, so that's part of it also. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah, sense? If, I, if I can just, yeah, I'll, I'll go down that tangent a little bit. So we're seeing Roughly from age 40, we're seeing a drop off about 1% of your free testosterone per year. Okay. Okay. So typically by the age of 60, you've lost about 50% of your testosterone from when it was at its peak in your, in your young 20s, late teens. Um, that's a problem that the testosterone levels are, are cratering across the planet. Researchers just don't know why. My assumption is that especially in the Western world, we've created an environment that is not conducive to testosterone production, whether it be environmental factors and xenoestrogens that are in our water and in our, or the products that we consume, our lifestyle, it, it's multifactorial. It's not just one thing that's causing it. Uh, but in my opinion, there's, there's, there's things that we can be doing right now that we're just not because our lifestyle is so chaotic and, and excuse me, and, and, uh, and stress inducing that we haven't got a grip on it and it's 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 causing a real issue you should not be and this is this is something that i preach a lot that when you get into your 60s and your 70s you shouldn't be frail and incapable of lifting things and being powerful and thriving our ancient ancestors even the the the, the ancient philo greek philosophers if you look at their statues statue of plato he's jacked he's ripped <laughs> he's an old man we have this perception that as you get older, you start to decay. And that's just a paradigm that we've accepted. That's a meme we've accepted. But in reality, we don't have to live like that. And testosterone is the key component that we're missing in order to start thriving. So that's where I want to just take that on a tangent is that, yeah, testosterone rates are, are declining. They don't have to at the rate that they're declining right now if we apply some, some basic strategies and, and start accepting the fact that we can live into our 60s and 70s looking really good and, and being strong and, and dialed in and fit. Okay. Yeah, there's so much right there, Dave, that we can <laughs> totally go down a rabbit hole into. Um, but I, I love, you know, thinking about what my clients go through, what you're talking about is not just being physically fit and strong and healthy, being mentally clear. And that piece you said about testosterone is what get, allows men to move through challenges. Right, to face and move through a challenge. That's so powerful right, when you've gone through something really traumatic like a divorce. But it sounds like cortisol is kind of like working against you right? because the stress of that challenging event is inhibiting the testosterone. And then you have all these other environmental societal factors and aging, like kind of this perfect storm of decreasing your testosterone right in the moments when you really need it the most. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure what everybody wants to know is what do you do about it? How do you do this step? It's a great question. Don't go smash beers. I could tell you that much. <laughs> Don't hit the bar. That's going to do the exact opposite. So there's a few things that happen when testosterone levels start to, well, so it's not that testosterone levels necessarily decline because cortisol levels are going up. It's just the, the access to the testosterone is not quite there because cortisol acts as an inhibitor for the testosterone to bind to certain, mm -hmm. um, 
certain pathways. So therefore, bringing testosterone, uh, allowing access to that testosterone is really important. So therefore, the easiest way to do it is bring cortisol levels down. So how do you bring cortisol levels down? Well, I mean, the easiest thing to do is just chill out, right? Find some really basic mindfulness things to do that take maybe five to 10 minutes a day. That has a note. So transcendental meditation is one thing that you can do, which is sounds really complicated, but it's really just taking a moment and listening to a mantra or listening to something on literally YouTube. They have all the apps out there that you can, that you can take and you can download. And that has been proven to reduce cortisol levels. And if you do that consistency consistently, you will see a, a, a noticeable drop in cortisol levels across the board. So that's one thing you can do. That's really simple that you can do tomorrow, today, after this podcast. Um, other things you can do, like obviously training. And for men, it's really important to lift heavy. That's one thing that we we tend to neglect, especially after we're, you know, out of our twenties, if you know, we went to the gym and then after you're kind of in your twenties, thirties, maybe you start a family, you're like, I don't, I really have time to get to the gym and do heavy deadlifts. Well, okay. Maybe you don't have time to do heavy deadlifts, but our bodies are designed to push a heavy stone to pull something. We're beasts of burden. We've got all the cellular machinery and metabolism to do it. If you don't do it, you're going to cause dysfunction. So you don't need to be a power lifter. You don't need to have technical skills. Farmers are the best example. They lift heavy stuff. The bales of hay, they're carrying buckets of milk, whatever they need to do. They're maintaining muscle mass and bone density and stimulating testosterone at a massive rate, just be by carrying things that are heavy. Mm -hmm. So if you can do that at a minimum once a week, you just need to do it once a week. You need to struggle once a week, push really hard on something. So it's, it's, it, it sucks. That's it. Uh, typically in the gym, that would be what we call a five by five. So five sets of five repetitions. So that fifth repetition is hard. If you have um, my basic one is get some contractor buckets, fill them up with water or sand and just hold them in your, in your hands. It's about 70 pounds. Just hold them for as long as you can and do that five times. Your body will be blown up after your abs will be sore. Your arms will be sore, your shoulders, everything. And your body will thank you for it. You'll all probably sleep better that night too. So that's another thing you do. And then there's nutrition. Nutri um, I, and actually I should, I should start with sleep. Sleep is hands down. Like if you want to do anything that's going to have the biggest impact on testosterone levels today, sort out your sleep. There is a hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. So getting a bit scientific on you, that means that your brain, so your hypothalamus, which is really important. That's like your, your midbrain um, for allowing you to get to sleep. If you're not sleeping properly, that hypothalamus is not able to fire and send the right signals to your pituitary gland, which is your master gland which stimulates follicle stimulating hormone, which goes to your testicles, which produces testosterone. So you could see if that, any link in that chain is broken, you're not going to produce testosterone. And so therefore, if you're not getting enough sleep, the hypothalamus can't signal to the pituitary, the pituitary can't signal to the, to the testicles, and then you can't produce testosterone. So that's why you need a minimum, minimum seven hours of sleep a night. I don't care if it's like, oh, I can get by in five. Okay, cool. Y you think you can, but evolutionarily, you need that sleep in order to repair and build muscle and have enough testosterone so that you can get through the day and actually think clearly. So that would be my biggest, my biggest message is that get the sleep into you, like focus very hard on sleep, find the ways to actually get a protocol in and be consistent with it. And that's been the biggest change for me and my family. We're like religious on sleep. Like I go to bed no later than 930 every night. And I get up at the same time, even on the weekends, because I prioritize sleep above almost all else, even my training. And that allows me to do what I need to do, take care of two kids, have a business, be a good husband or try to be, and, you know, hang out with my friends, do all the things that, you know, a guy needs to do these days. It's demanding. I need my sleep. That's plain and simple. I'm so glad that you brought it up in that way, Dave, because there is kind of this like toughness. Do not sleeping, right? And I think especially in the business world, 
you know, the people who can get by on their like four hours or five hours, there's this kind of like myth out there that they're like the most productive and they're the ones who can, like that's why they're so successful and that somehow there's like some kind of masculine toughness in not needing sleep. But what you're describing is that physiologically that's just total BS, right? But in fact, doing that and putting your body through that is gonna decrease your access to the testosterone that's gonna give you the strength, the power, the ability to move through all those challenges. Um, yeah. Uh, so not everything's black and white. There are times when there's a need for a sprint and, you know, I'm totally guilty of it, especially being ex-military. We, you know, spend days without sleep. Uh, there are times when your job is not going to allow you to get that sleep that you need that seven hours, eight hours, and that's okay. But you need to, you need to recognize that that's not a, a steady state. You need to ensure that if you have those sprints where you're running on maybe four or five hours sleep, your body's going to find a way to either downregulate itself, to reduce your performance so that it can recover. If you never prioritize that recovery afterwards, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be reduced testosterone levels. There's going to be reduced ability to focus, reduced muscle mass, you name it. Like the cascade effects that happen from poor sleep are, are numerous. I did a great podcast with a former Navy SEAL, Dr. Kirk Parsley, who was a Navy SEAL and is a doctor and focuses on sleep. And he started with his own SEALs. He was noticing that, man, they're all broken. They've come back from missions and like they, they're young guys and they were getting chubby and they're moody and they weren't recovering. And he just started focusing on sleep. And basically he says like sleep or die. It doesn't matter if you're a high-end military operator or working a nine to five, He's like, your sleep needs to be prioritized. And he came up with a protocol, which is basically the cool, dark cave protocol. You need to have a cool, dark cave to sleep in, just like our ancestors did. And you need to focus on sleep density. So let's say you have only four hours, five hours of sleep. Well, is your sleep quality? Yeah. Are there any lights around you? Did you look at your phone a half hour before going to bed? Are you eating tons of crap and like Cheetos and, you know, having coffee way too late at night? Like, uh, is your bedroom cool? These are all things that you need to take into consideration because you need to get into deep sleep and you need to have like REM cycles of sleep in order for you to produce growth hormone, which we haven't even talked about. But on top of testosterone, if you want to repair your muscles, if you want to improve, you know, in the gym, growth hormone is what helps that happen. And that really only gets secreted at night when you're in deep sleep. So don't get any deep sleep. You're not only not producing growth hormone. You're not going to be able to produce testosterone and you can see where if you fall into that trap, you're just going to feel more and more and more slow and sluggish and then try to push through even more and maybe take caffeine and other stimulants. And then you, I call it the Dave Morrow downward spiral of shit. You just keep on spiraling down and down and down and down and down until you get to a point where you can't go anymore. And that's where you have to figure out a new solution, a new paradigm. And in the midst of all of that, right, if you're not taking care of the sleep, it doesn't really matter. It sounds like how much you're training. because you're Actually, it's counterproductive. Yeah. It's, it's totally, it's counterproductive. So the, uh, especially because uh, I work with men typically in their forties, um, the, the ego is still of a 20 year old. That's hard to, it's hard to get rid of. Right. Uh, and especially in the, the military and police world, CrossFit and high intensity interval training is very popular. So imagine you have a guy, I am I was guilty of this. I want to get fitter. I want to get healthier and I want to look good. You know, I want to look good for my wife. Like I want her to be like, yeah, get over here. So I go to the gym and I start what I call am wrapping myself today uh, to death. So as many rounds as possible, that's a very typical CrossFit type workout. And I was getting fatter and I was getting more joint pain and I was more moody and I wasn't getting the results I wanted and I couldn't figure out why. And ultimately what you're doing, again, it's cortisol related. You're imposing a stress on your body, which is training. So you have this stress and then you need to recover. So you're basically breaking muscle tissue down. It needs to repair itself. You don't get enough sleep. You don't take enough time off. You don't get back to baseline and then super compensate and get stronger. You actually get weaker. And then you hit yourself again with another workout. And then you're your actual fitness starts to decline, even though you're going to the gym more because you're not recovering enough to incorporate those gains. And that's where a lot of the guys I work with, I reduce the amount of time they're in the gym 
and they actually get stronger and faster and lose weight because they're eating more, they're sleeping more, and they're training less, and their minds are broken because it doesn't make sense because we've been told eat less, do more for 40, 50 years, and the model's not working, but we still keep on pretending that it's going to bring us these gains when, in fact, our bodies don't work that way at all. There's like so many little like light bulbs in my own brain. Like yeah. I'm in the middle of this like 108 day yoga challenge, right? That's like up leveling and it's, and yeah, the first couple of weeks of it, I was definitely not getting stronger. Um, that's, that's fascinating because it, it's like, we're really oversimplifying it, right? We're like, we'll eat less and exercise more and you'll get stronger and lose weight. But there's, our bodies are so much more complex than that. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course, if you're breaking down muscle and never giving it a chance to build back up, you can't get stronger. And then not to mention all these hormonal pathways you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Um, Precisely. I'm, like imagine, yeah, you're literally, when you go train, when you go lift weights, which is, you know, one of the best things you can do for your body, for your mental health, cardiovascular health, you name it. Well, you're breaking the muscle tissue down and our bodies are efficiency machines. The reason why it's breaking down is because it wants to rebuild it stronger in the future to make that easier. It goes, wait, hold on a sec. I got to do this again, maybe. All right. I wanted to make it more efficient. So therefore, I'm going to add a little bit more muscle tissue when I build this back so that it can be easier. So I expend less energy when I have to push, pull, whatever. And that's why you get stronger when you're in the gym. But if you don't provide your body with the right macronutrients like protein after the workout and you don't sleep to consolidate those gains through growth hormone well then you're just you're you're never going to get to where you want to go and then you're just going to incur more and more cortisol responses and you're not going to get fitter you're just going to get more miserable and then frustrated that you're never getting the gains that you're expecting and then you get frustrated and you go well there's no point going to the gym i never lose weight Right. Yeah, your paradigm is wrong. You're not eating enough. You're not eating enough protein. You're not drinking enough water. You're not going to bed long enough. Training is hard on the body. You need to sleep, and that's if you're if you're training. Even if you're even if you're just exercising and you're not following a training plan, you need to ensure that you get adequate rest. Just just to ensure that you can rebuild and not have all these little extra bobos, as I call them, um, kicking around that can eventually become serious if you don't treat them well. And sleep is your first step by far. Um, Dave, I know where it's not, it, this is like a conversation I feel like we could just have for days. I have so many more questions, um, but I know we're kind of getting to the, the end of our time here. So I, I would like to ask you to just touch a little bit on nutrition. I know you just mentioned protein, but can you give us kind of the, the down and dirty quick view of how nutrition um, plays with getting fitter, but also with testosterone levels? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's, certain things that you can do just at a macro level that most guys aren't doing. And, you know, like I have a five step process that I typically go through when I'm working with somebody to rebuild their foundation. Um, so it's all focused around testosterone. So the first thing, especially around nutrition is I like to remove the things that are just not doing you any service that are actually contributing to you just being weaker, slower, and fatter. And the three basic ones are sugar. So that's processed sugar. That's refined sugar. The second one are polyunsaturated, fat, saturated, polyunsaturated fatty acids from seed oils, which cause just a whole host of inflammation in the body because they're industrial oils where our bodies have never evolved to, to consume them. You can get them in, in meat and avocados and natural sources, totally fine. But when they're refined and when they're from an industrial source, it just flares up your immune response. That's not a good thing. And then yeah, lastly, yeah. sorry, just a real quick, a couple examples of seed oil, like for people who don't. Sure. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, canola oil, vegetable yeah. oil, uh, grapeseed oil, like anything that comes a uh, soy, um, like all these oils that are ubiquitous everywhere that are used in cooking and French fries and crackers and they're everywhere. Granola bars, like anything you basically get in the box it uses these oils because they're insanely cheap they have an extremely long shelf life so when you're making an industrial food you go well this is like a wonder food why wouldn't i use this well yeah however 
it's destroying your health by eating it. So if you're con constantly consuming it and you're wondering like, why do I not feel so great? Why do I always feel like crap? Well, like start there, you know, start there at the, the sugar. So are you consuming a lot of excess sugar? Like that's a, that's a no brainer. That's pro-inflammatory. It's carcinogenic. It stimulates insulin and it creates obesity. Like it's just, you know, why are you eating it? Likely because you're addicted because it gives you a dopamine hit. And then the polyunsaturates, just try to stay away from the seed oils. And then lastly, it's alcohol. Alcohol, everybody loves it. It's part of our culture. I enjoy a drink at the end of the week, but I know if I'm trying to lose body fat and I'll get into body fat in a second, um, if you're trying to lose body fat, your consumption of alcohol, especially if it's in excess, you're just, you're, you're, you're being very counterproductive um, if you're consuming alcohol. And for a whole host of reasons, it's also a neurotoxin. It's just not the best thing to be consuming. And even if we're not talking about the amount of carbohydrates you're consuming with alcohol in itself so those three if you can like do like a pullback and say okay i'm not eating these at least for two weeks that's typically what we do um on the topic of body fat body fat especially for men um the fat cell itself secretes a tiny amount of estrogen so fat is its own tissue and the more fat you have in your body the more estrogen you will be secreting we haven't even talked about estrogen mm -hmm. so testosterone in the presence of a large amount of body fat will be consumed and through a metabolic process be reconverted into estrogen into your bloodstream. Hmm. Having that estrogen in your bloodstream is not a good thing in excess because it will make men feel lethargic. It will make men feel tired. It'll make men not feel clear of thought. And on top of that, it creates the conditions to put on more body fat. The reason why, you know, women, you have an excess of estrogen, especially when it, it comes to having a child is it's there to add more body fat so that you can have a child and grow one over nine months. It's very important for energy balance for men. It's good in small doses, but in large doses and chronic doses, it just wreaks havoc. And so the body fat issue, if you keep on adding more body fat, it's a vicious circle. You'll keep on adding more and more and more body fat just because you'll be able to secrete more estrogen through that body fat. So therefore getting your body fat down is so important for a man if he wants to have a high enough testosterone level. There's like so many little cycles <laughs> right in your body. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, Dave, I'm sure a lot of people are like me and have so many more questions for you. How can... How can somebody get in touch with you if they want to work with you? Are you are you taking on new training clients? What's the best mm. to, to get access to all these things you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I just ran a uh, free seminar yesterday. So whenever this podcast is, is released, this was on the 17th of uh, August. I have three more spots for my bees program uh, for this month of August uh, that are available and it's by uh, appointment. So you do an application, you can go to go.davemorrow.net slash beast application and you can apply there. But my website is davemorrow.net, super easy to find. And you can find my blogs and podcasts there. And I go over the, the application process as well. And on the so on socials, I'm Dave Morrow PT, and uh, I'm really active on Facebook and Instagram. So you can find me there, and I have loads of content that you can start uh, consuming, uh, so that you can find out whether or not uh, these protocols are are right for you, and set up a time to chat and see where we can go from there. Yeah, it sounds like your podcast itself is a wealth of information. That might be a good place for people to. Sorry, yeah, there it is. The hard to kill. <laughs> yeah, we're in the shirt. Uh, yeah, so the hard to kill podcast was really uh, basically how I got my business started. It was just on a whim. I was actually unemployed. <laughs> I just gotten fired from the last job I was at, and I was like, "Well, what am I going to do now? Uh, I guess I'll start a podcast." And I wanted to create an, uh, I guess, an environment for. What I call the sheepdog community, so the veterans and first responders, to learn about alternative health and how to fix themselves. Because I was on that journey, I was fixing my back and knee issues and my post traumatic stress issues, and it also helped get me some free therapy because I got to talk to some really awesome therapists, doctors from all across the planet. And it's been three seasons now. I'm at episode one eighteen, going to be one nineteen this week. 
And uh, we're the number one alternative health podcast for veterans in Canada right now. So I'm hoping to make that the number one alternative health podcast in the world eventually. So uh, by all means, head to the Hard to Kill podcast on Facebook or just find the Hard to Kill podcast on your favorite podcast app and uh, give us a review, a like, and a subscription. It'd be much appreciated. So, um, Dave, obviously there's so many directions we could go and so much more we could explore, but is there like one big takeaway, something particularly for, let's picture, I don't know, a 45 to 60 year old man, just got divorced, married for 20 or 30 years, just starting out on this journey. There's so much, right? There's obviously so much to know. What's the, what's the one thing you would say to him? Get up and go. Just go get up, do something. Your mind follows your body. You have to start moving, whether it's a walk, it doesn't matter. Don't think, do. And if you can get into that act of doing rather than thinking and getting cerebral, no, go out, do something, get some vitamin D, get off your phone, go push something heavy. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a weightlifter. Like I said, the easiest thing to do is just go grab a bucket and carry it around. Get primal. Like get in touch with your primal barbarian testosterone laden roots. And I guarantee you're going to feel better at the end of the day. And that's basically it. I love it. Get up and go, right? Do something, preferably something hard and something heavy. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Dave, thank you so much for your time. It's, it's great having you here. Thanks for having me on. Awesome.